Okay, uh, let's start about this class. So in the previous classes we discussed how to find out the transfer function. Are you agree with this? Yes. So in this class, so we are going to see the stability analysis of a control system. What is the meaning of stability? So as we all know, see every machine will be having certain limits. Yes or no? Every machine will be having certain limits. So this machine can work from so and so frequency to so and so frequency. So if we give less than that, less than less than the uh, prescribed power, whether the system is going to work? No. If we give more than that, what happens? It may get damaged. So that means every machine will be having certain limit or certain range where the machine is going to operate properly. So that is what we are going to call as stability. Stability of a system. So in this so how we are going to say whether the system is stable or not okay so how we, how we can say the system is stable or not or up to what range the system will be stable to identify the stability of the system so we are going to consider the transfer function so this is the standard form of what transfer function okay so here to find out whether the system is stable or not so we are going to consider the denominator of the transfer function, right? So this is the denominator of the transfer function. So thus we, that one we are going to equate it to zero. So this equation, what we are going to call it as characteristic equation. Okay, this equation is called as what? Characteristic equation. So this equation is used to find out the stability of the strain system. Okay. So this is what the stability analysis of a control system. In the previous classes, we discussed how to find out the transfer function. So now we are going to decide and how we are going to check the stability of the system. <coughs> and so there is certain conditions is being given. What are the conditions? The first condition is all the coefficients. All the coefficients of S. So here the denominator terms are there, no? So thus that one we are going to call as poles. Any coefficients of S in the numerator that we are going to call as zeros so this will come in the next chapter so first you need to know whatever the s terms are there that we are going to call as what poles so how many poles are there so here s to the power of n is there so therefore n number of poles how many number of zeros are there m that is the m number of zeros are there. okay so here the denominator terms we are going to call as poles the numerator term we are going to call as what? Zeros. To find out the uh, stability of the system, what we are going to consider? We are going to consider the denominator of the system. So this one we are going to call as characteristic equation. And they are telling that uh, nothing should be negative, right? So none of the polynomials should be negative. So there should not be any negative signs. And there is another condition is there. What is that condition? N yes. must be present in the Yeah. Sorry? N. None, yes. of the coefficients None of the coefficients vanishes. That means after S to the power of N. So the next coefficient will be it should go in a decreasing order. Yes. S to the power of N minus 1. S to the power of N minus 2. So like that it should go in a decreasing order. So that is what none of the terms is going to vanish. So these are the necessary conditions to find out the stability of the system. Did you got it? Yes. Next one. So now there are two methods are there to find out the stability of the system. How many methods are there? Yes. Two methods. So the first method is Hurwitz criterion method. Please take down. Hurwitz criterion method.
strange. As I told, to find out the stability of the system, so we have two methods. The first method is Harvey's criterion method. The next one is Rose Array method. It's a RH method. Is there. there are two methods are there. So now let's discuss about the Harvey's criterion method. Okay. As I told, to find out the stability of the system, what we are going to consider, we are going to consider the step. characteristic equation. This is a characteristic equation a one x to the power of n, a one x to the power of n minus one up to a m. So now this characteristic equation we are going to write in the form of matrix. So what is the highest power? N, right? So x to the power of n. The power is n. So I need to form a matrix of n cross n. You did got it. Yes, yes. So the highest to or highest to power of S is n. So therefore, I need to form the matrix of n cross n. So how to form a matrix? So here the first S to the power of n, right? The coefficient of S to the power of n is what? Yeah. Right. In the same way, coefficient of n minus one is. Yeah. So in the while writing the matrix, so that's why we are going to call it the criterion method. So that's what that's why it is represented as what h is equal to the first element of matrix that is coefficient of s s to the power of n minus 
right so therefore a1 so i am going to leave one term next term will be a to the power a3 coefficient of n minus 3 that is a3 a5 like that a2 and minus 1 in the same way next row will be it will be start from a not next will be we are going to leave one term so next coefficient that is a2 right so next it will be a4 sorry this will be 4 did you got it so this one will be a4 so we are going to write these two rows using this characteristic equation did you got it so next subsequent rows so this third row will be repetition of the first row but the first element of the first row third row will be same so then we will start from a3 and we are going to leave the last element that is a2 and minus 3 here a2 and minus 1 you did got it so in the same way the fourth row will be repetition of second row but it will be start from zero so like this we are going to write the whole combination right so this is how we are going to form the matrix with the help of the characteristic equation see after forming the characteristic so next method is we need to find out the determinant so here d1 represent what determinant of a1 what is the meaning of a1 so there is 1 cross 1 so next d2 what is the meaning of d2 number of rows is equal to 2 number of columns is equal to 2 so we are going to extract this from this matrix main matrix so we are going to get a 2 cross 2 matrix that is a1 a3 a0 a2 so next d3 so 3 cross 3 That means first three rows and columns. See a one, a three, a five, a not a two, a four, zero a one, a three. In the same way, I need to point out d four. What do we mean by d four? Four cross four. So we need to find out the determinants of two d n. Right? See when we are going to say that is what that is what we return. So we need to find out the determinant of whole matrix. Okay. So when we can say the system is stable, so when the determinants of all this all are positive, when all the determinants are positive, then we can say the system is stable, or else it is not stable. Are you getting my point? so that's why this method the arbitrary criterion method is called as formation of determinants okay so we are going to find out the determinants then if all the determinants are positive so then we are going to say it is a stable system or it is a unstable system okay so we will understand better so when we solve a problem did you got it डिटर्मिनेट so this is the characteristic equation of a given system okay so this is the characteristic equation of a given system so therefore this has to be equated to what zero so this one we going to call as characteristic equation so now with the help of this characteristic equation we first we are going to form the main matrix we are going to create the main matrix so before that we should know what is the highest power three so n is equal to how much So therefore, what will be the matrix size? Three cross three. So we need to form a matrix of three cross three. Is it clear? Yes, and what are the conditions? So none of the terms should vanish, right? 
So of the a to the power of three, we need to check x to the power of two is there, x to the power of one is there, and x to the power of zero is there. If any term is vanishing, you need to add it, and the multiplication will be equal to zero. That's it. Okay. So none of the term should vanish. So how to create a uh, h? So this is the Herbert's method. As I told, to write the first row. So we need to consider the coefficient of x to the power n minus one. Yes, sir. So right, this is the x to the power of n. So n minus one means what? Two. Two. So what is the coefficient of this? One. one. So after two, so the next coefficient will be x to the power of zero. zero. So there, what is the coefficient of the? This will be the constant, right? Four. Four. Next, what is the next term? Zero. Nothing is there, therefore we need to add a zero. zero. So why? Because I need to construct a matrix of what? Zero. 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 Is it clear? Yes, sir. So now I need to to write the next row. I need to take the coefficient of x to the power of n. What is the coefficient of x to the power of n? It is one. So I am going to leave one term. What is the coefficient of next one? X to the power of one. So it will be one. So what is the next term? Zero. Did you got it? So I need to next write the next third row. For that, what I need to consider? I need to consider this element, this row. The first element will be zero. zero. One, four, four. Right. So this is what we are going to call that. Construct in the matrix from the given characteristic. I hope you got it. Yes, sir. So next to find out the stability of the system, we need to find out the determinants. So how many determinants we need to find out? B one, B two, B three. We need to find out the determinants of B one to. Three. What is the meaning of B one? one. one. So first element one. B two means what? Two cross two matrix. One four one four one one. Next one. This is one four zero one one zero zero one four. Right. So I need to find out the determinant of D1, D2, and D3. What is the determinant of this? One. So this one will be minus three. One into one, right? One into one, that is one. One into four, four. That is, as per the formula, it will be minus four, right? So therefore, this will be equal to how much? Minus three. Correct, ah. So to form a determinant of this plus minus plus. So this will be equal to one into four into one four one into zero minus zero. This will be minus four. So this will be equal to four into one. Uh, correct, ah. Minus four into four into one. one. Minus zero. Zero. Next plus zero. Right. So therefore, how much? Four minus sixteen. Minus zero will be four minus sixteen. How much? So that B three determinant is equal to minus. Is it right? Since what is? At last, you need to write the comment. Comment on the stability of the system. As I told, if all the determinants are positive, then the system is stable. If any one of the determinant is negative, then the system is unstable. Since after finding D1, D2, and D3, we came to know D2 and D3 D3 are negative. The determinants of D2 and D3 are Negative. Hence, the system is unstable. This is what we need to write at last. That is a comment on the stability. Is it clear? Yes, okay. Let's solve another problem. Right? This problem. This problem. Not another. 
this problem. So we need to first form the main matrix. How to form the main matrix? Can you tell me? H is equal to so, two. So here the highest order is what? Three. So we need to form a matrix of how much? Three cross three. Okay. So first we need to form a matrix of three cross three. So the highest term coefficient is one. So we are not going to consider that one. We are going to leave this term. The next coefficient that is x to the power of two. What is the coefficient of x to the power of two? Minus four. Minus four. So we are going to write alternate, right? So we are going to leave this. The next coefficient is six. The next one will be zero. Now to write the second row, so it will be one. That is the coefficient of x to the power of three. Three. Next is to the power of one, and next one is zero. The next row will be the function limit will be zero, and we are going to repeat the first row. So minus four and six. So we need to find out what is one determinant. That is how many determinants? D one, D two, D three. So what is D one? It is one cross one minus four. This will be minus four six one one. Here the complete matrix I need to write. So minus four six zero one one zero zero minus four six. So can you please tell me the determinants of this? This is equal to minus four minus ten. This is minus ten minus ten. What about this? Minus six zero. This is. So this is the determinant of minus four. Is the D one is minus four, D two is minus ten, D three is minus sixteen. See, for the system to be stable, D one, D two, and D three must be positive. So here all are negative. Hence we can comment on the stability since all the determinants are. Negative, hence the system is unstable. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Right. Thank you. Thank you, sir.